What's up, poker people? My name's Wes, and this is my poker vlog. Today, we're playing a 1 3 No Limit Hold'em cash game session at Texas Card House in Houston, Texas. We normally play a 5 5 on the vlog, but today we're playing 1 3, so the game should be pretty conservative, right? This is for entertainment only. I am not a professional poker player. I'm not trying to be a poker coach. I'm trying to share the fun of the games to play in. Enjoy the action. All right, let's get started. We got a 1-3 session. Maybe this will be a little bit more relatable than the crazy 5-5 five five sessions I've been playing in. So this hand starts. I've got the straddle under the gun. We got a few limpers. And I'm going to look down at 2-3 suited. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you might have the impression that I love 2-3 suited, but it's not actually true. If you told me I had to go the rest of my life never playing 2-3 suited again, I'd be totally okay with that. But it just happens I was in the straddle, the raise wasn't too big, and I wanted to see a flop. And now the hard part, flopping something good with 2-3 suited. That's what we're looking for! So on this flop, I'm always going to check to the pre-flop raiser. And the question is, do I want to check raise or check call? So we check to the button who bets 50. And I decided right away, I'm going to give it a check raise. I made it 125. I don't want to go too big. I don't want to blow them off their hand or let them know that I have a three. But I want to start building a pot. And I think this is the best way to do it. Surprisingly, we get called in two spots and we're going to a turn. That's a good turn card. I looked around at the two players and one of them has about 350 left and the other one has maybe 150 left. So. This pot's already $470. I'm just gonna put them all in, see if they wanna call off with a queen. So I bet $356 effective, and the middle position player calls pretty quickly, and the other player folds. We're going to a river. I show my three. River's an ace. The three is good, and he shows ace queen. You know what? Maybe I do like deuce three. Last Saturday, I hosted my very first live stream on YouTube. We had an eight hour 5-5 five five session where there were thousands of dollars moving around the table. We had tons of viewers, I answered questions, everybody had a good time. I'm gonna start doing this more often, so make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you can find out when I go live. This is the first time that I played with the player on my right. He was showing some signs of splashiness, maybe he was getting bored, but he had recently raised to 400 preflop and then flashed the nine of diamonds. So I kind of thought he was kind of loosening up, looking for some action. In this hand, we had a straddle and a couple calls and he just makes it 60 bucks to go. I had pocket eights, I called. Of course, you're always hoping to hit a set, but what if you don't? And we don't. But it is a seven high flop, so we're actually ahead of a lot of the hands he's gonna raise pre-flop. And then he just bets $400 into a pot that has 140 in it. That's a pretty big bet, and I just don't think you're gonna be doing that with aces or kings. This is Big Mac, my man of my word. Next card, I don't care what it is, I'm all in. Okay, what's going on with this guy? Why would he say this? I started thinking about a range this guy might play this way. Again, I mentioned he was loosening up and showing some aggression, some action, some willingness to gamble. Let's just put him on a range of any pair all the way from deuces to aces, an ace-jack, ace-queen, and ace-king. I think this is a pretty reasonable range for this guy. It leaves him some really strong hands, aces and kings, although I still think those are unlikely, but it does give him some sets, sevens, fours, and deuces that have us crushed, but also some over pairs that again have us crushed, but those big high cards, ace queen, ace jack, and ace king, they might wanna play this way, and they may even call an all in and give us a chance to win a big pot. As you can see, against this range, it's a coin flip, and there's already $500 out there. So what do we do? I end up ripping it in and he called pretty quickly, which is concerning. We didn't show our cards. And I messed up the camera angle, but the run out is gonna be an ace and a deuce. He doesn't show his hand right away. So I go ahead and table. And he shows pocket tens. Bye bye $1,500. I bought back in for $2,000. 
This is the weirdest series of flop lag that I've ever experienced. This is so crazy, I just had to include it in my vlog. So in the previous hand, I had those eights where he just busted me. I would have turned quads, and if he had tens, he would have flopped a set. It would have been set over set, and I would have turned quads if you're looking at the last hand. So again, on that hand, I had pocket sevens. And it comes the very next flop, seven, seven. In this hand, I have jack nine of clubs. And in the next hand, Look at this flop, king nine nine. So flop lag, I would have flopped trips. In the actual hand, I have six three of clubs and I'm trying to bet a flush draw and I end up folding the river. But let's look at the next hand. Are you kidding me? Look at that, I flopped trips. I would have turned a full house. I, would, I know what the river's gonna be. <laughs> river's gonna be a six, everybody. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I called it too. <laughs> you got off. I'm telling you, I knew it was. <laughs> and that's the laugh of a man who's not sure what he just saw. All right, in this hand, we're going to go to battle again with that guy on my right, Big Mac. He's going to open in this hand, and I look down at King 8 suited. And I just decide I'm gonna three bet him. Let's try to isolate, play this hand heads up against him in position, so I make it $100 to go. I'm really expecting everyone to fold, I'm expecting Mac to call, and we're gonna see a flop. Before he calls, he asks me how much I have behind, which is about 1500, and then he makes the call. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It is hard to get paid off when you flop the nut flush, you're gonna have to build a pot slowly. I'm all in. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> that fucked up, man. I felt you were gonna do that too. That's I was like, fun, oh my man. god, is he I really about to? What <laughs> just happened? <laughs> that's sick, right, bro. bro. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was gross. <laughs> Look at him. That's crazy, man. Uh, I already got over here. Got a bag. Seven plus eight, right? 15. 1521. <laughs> and we got it all back. In this hand, man, I hate saying this, but I'm gonna play one of those hands that I always say that I don't play. Or at least I don't like to play. So we're on the button with ace nine offsuit. There's a race to 26 and everybody calls. I'm on the button, it's just 20 bucks more. I'm gonna call and see a flop. Of course we're hoping for an ace, but what do you do when you hit one? So I hit an ace, I don't have a kicker. There's some worse kickers that actually make two pairs, so what do I even do? The original Razor checks, and now the big blind takes over the action by betting $50. The cutoff calls, and I, I guess I'm gonna call, see a turn, pray for a nine. I don't even think I wanna hit an ace. Man, I really hate this hand. All right, so we're going to the turn. Uh, it's a three. Does that improve anybody? I have no idea. This is so hard, I hate doing this. Why did I play this hand? I should just fold this every time. Okay, now he's betting 75. Do I really believe this guy? I mean, you're not worried about this board? And now the cutoff calls. I'm actually more worried about the cutoff, but I'm gonna do one of those plays that everybody in the comments is just confused about, and I'm gonna raise it to 300. Now I do have actually pretty strong reasons for doing this. I'm not gonna get into them on this vlog, you guys have seen me do this a couple times before. It's gonna have varying degrees of success. Sometimes you're gonna get a better hand to fold. Sometimes you're gonna get a worse hand to call. And that's basically what we're going for here. So I make it 300, the big blind calls, it's over to the cutoff, and he also wants to see the river, which is an ace of clubs. Is that good for us? Man, I don't really know. At this point, I'm just hoping that raise on the turn bought us a showdown. We're gonna see what these guys have, and maybe we win. Sure enough, it checks around. The first guy shows ace eight, I can beat that. I show my hand, and then the cutoff shows four five for a straight. It was the nuts on the turn. I don't know why he didn't raise that turn after I put 300 out there. Check out my website, razorclothing.com for poker t-shirts, hats, and hoodies. 
I'm really excited to show you guys this hand because in this hand I have the dreaded pocket jacks and I'm going to teach you the precise way to play this hand. We've got $6 in the straddle, a couple limpers, and we're going to bomb it to $50. Step one is to punish the limpers, try to get this hand heads up and go to the flop. But instead we're going to go to the flop five ways. All right, well there's 216 in the pot. Let's see a flop. Maybe we can flop a jack. Yeah, yeah. So the flop is five, five, three. When it checks to me, oh my gosh, that guy's all in for $150. Um, The pot's already 400. I, I guess I'm gonna call, man, he has a five, doesn't he? Uh, I hate pocket jacks. Maybe I should have just limped in. And now the guy on my right calls, oh my God, does he have a five two? All right, well, it's only 150. I'm gonna call, let's see what happens. Maybe we need to build a pot on the side against the guy on my right. I don't really know. Luckily, nobody else calls. We're gonna go a turn card. Maybe we can hit a good turn card. Ugh, a seven. I don't think that's a good turn card. I'm basically just trying to check this hand down at this point. Uh, the six, there's no way, there's no way we win. There's no way we win this hand. I show my pocket jacks and there's quite a bit of a delay before King 5 is shown. Yeah, King 5 called $50 preflop. Yeah, that happened. This hand starts with a raise to 25 and two callers before we even look down at Ace Queen suited. I'm gonna bump it up, make it 100 to go. Let's thin the field a little bit or at least make the pot bigger to where it's easier to put pressure on these people. The initial raiser calls, the player on his left also calls, and we do drop one player, so we're going three ways to the flop. Okay, we don't hit anything, but it could be worse. We've got some backdoor draws, and we might even be able to get some overcards to fold. So I'm gonna bet 125, it's kind of a small bet, but it serves its purpose on this type of flop. And now the guy goes all in for $406. I guess I stepped in it, but I'm getting two to one. I'm gonna make the call, hope for some favorable run out. Oh, we got him. Full boat. Did he just say full boat? Oh, the poor parrot, he had a set. He has a full house and we lose. What have I done to make the poker gods hate me? And here's my stack, I'm not gonna count it, you can figure it out. And moving on to a hand that everyone loves to play, Jack-10 suited. And it's on the button. There was a raise in front of us, a couple of calls, I'm gonna call, I've got position, and a beautiful drawing hand. And we flop the top end of an open ender. Now we don't have the flush draw to go with it, but I really like this hand at this point, especially in position. We're just gonna call, let's see a turn card. It's 25 bucks to go. We go three ways to the turn. Give me that seven. That's a five. Okay, okay, well, we didn't turn a straight. The big blind continues with a $75 bet. I'm actually okay with this. We need to build a pot anyway if we're gonna wanna bomb this river, so I'll call 75 so that we can make it like 300 on the river when a seven comes. The small blind gets out of the way. We're now heads up to the river. God dang it! As often happens with Jack 10 suited, we're at the river with Jack high. The big blind bets $100. I'm kind of wondering what hand this guy can have that he can bet every street on this board. Now I don't beat anything, but the question is, will he fold a hand like Queen Jack of Spades if I make a raise? And if I'm gonna raise, do I even need to make it that big? I decide to make a small raise targeting missed flush draws that are over cards. I make it 225. And if this guy just has spades, he's gonna fold faster than, oh, he called. Oh, uh, I got him, um, Jack High. 
He shows 9-7 of spades. That hand might have folded to a really big raise, but I'm not even sure. Sometimes you gotta mix it up and try different things. Look at my V-pip in this game. It is blowing up. I definitely play more hands in 1-3 games than I do in the 5-5 five -five game. I widen my range quite a bit in 1-3, and I narrow my range when I'm playing 5-5. Five -five. I'm on the button here with king-queen, and I called an $18 raise. I flop a king in position, and I get checked to. I make a $20 bet, and the big blind calls. Now, I don't assume the big blind would ever have a king here. He should just lead out into me, so I should have the best hand. On that turn card, although I might not have the best hand, I do turn an open ender. So I'm going to bet $50 and see what he does. He just calls. And I river three of a kind. This card may not really matter in this spot. If I was ahead on the flop, I'm still ahead now. The only thing this changes is me beating Jack-10. I'm gonna make a small bet, see if he wants to call. I bet $120. He looks me up, I show my hand, and he quickly mucks. The only hand that really makes a lot of sense for him to call down with is probably Ace-Jack, and I guess we got lucky on the flop, and he just decided to call us down. Now let's watch me play a hand that nobody at home should ever play ever, ever. There's a $6 button straddle, the small blind calls, and I raise it up with king seven suited because I'm not you. The cutoff calls, the button calls, and we're gonna go multi-way to the flop because the small blind called as well. So that's four ways, go into a flop with king seven suited. And that's what I deserve. All right, well, I'm not giving up yet. I see one card out there that has the same shape as my cards have, so I'm gonna see bet. I bet $50, the cutoff calls. We go heads up. Let's turn a king. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. And I decide to get tricky on this hand. I checkity check over to the cutoff who bets $50 tank for a while like I'm not sure what to do and I'm gonna make a raise. Part of what I want to do with this raise is make it look like I'm not sure what I'm doing. Yeah that, that'll do it. So I make it $150 it's over to the cutoff. He says what is that a hundred more and he makes the call. Okay we're going to the river and on this river I want you guys to pause the video and type in the comments, bet the king or check the king. Which one do you think I should do? If you typed check the king, you should go back over to Andrew Nemi's vlog. I bet $200 on this river. I'm really targeting a hand like pocket nines or eight nine that just doesn't believe I could have turned a king. He calls and his cards go in the muck, which means we win. Don't try this at home. And now we've got everybody's second favorite hand. Pocket aces. Admit it, you like some other hand better. There's a button straddle to $6. I'm gonna make it $25 to go. We get a call from the cutoff. And we get a call from the button. We're going three ways to a flop. If you're not thinking flop an ace, flop an ace, flop an ace, then you're not doing this right. Flop an ace. Since I have the ace of clubs, it really limits how many flush draws these guys can have. So I'm just gonna bet small and hope to get called by something like queen jack or whatever. I bet $25 and both players call, which is kind of surprising. The turn is a club, which gives me the nut flush draw. And again, it's very unlikely that these guys would have turned to flush since I have the ace of clubs. I bet $75, the cutoff calls, and then the button raises to $200. Maybe I was wrong, maybe this guy did have a flush draw. He only raised to $200. I can still call, pair the board and make a full boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and call and just hope this dealer pairs the board. The cutoff folds and we get heads up. Come on dealer, pair the board. Eh, not this time. I go ahead and check. The button bets 200, this is the same bet he made in the turn, I'm just gonna call. And instantly he says, oh, I missed. So I just show my cards and he mucks. He's probably lucky that he didn't hit that draw. A player in the game was giving out stickers anytime a player did something good like 
want a hand or bluff somebody. And these are the stickers I've earned to this point. But there's one sticker that I haven't won yet, and I want to win it. Show the camera what's up for grabs. I'm driving. The ever elusive koala. All right, if I want to win the koala sticker, I'm gonna have to win this hand somehow. I look down at 10-8 offsuit with two limps in front of me. All right, let's just start raising. I make a $15 to go. A bunch of people call and we're going to a flop. I flop a pair, so that's a pretty good start. It's really not the best board. I'm gonna check, see what the other players do. It checks the player on my left and he's gonna bet $25, I guess trying to win his own koala sticker. That doesn't make any sense. The button also calls. Koala. I kinda feel like you guys might win the koala. The under the gun limper calls and I call. I'm gonna need some sort of miracle. An eight from down under. Now we turn trips, but of all the eights, this is definitely the worst eight. It puts three to the flush out there. I'm just gonna have to check call, hope to pair the board again. So the button bets $20. Another gun player who limped and then called the raise and then check called is also gonna call, and then I'm gonna call. Apparently these guys want this koala sticker just as bad as I do, cause we're going three ways to the river. Crikey! Koala the chips are gonna be mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna lead this river for $100. I bet 100, the button calls, and the under the gun player is gonna fold. Give me that koala. Ooh. Oh! Wanna see, yeah, put it on. I worked hard for it. All right, last hand of the vlog. I better make this one a good one. I've got ace king suited under the gun. I had already straddled for $6 and everybody just limped in and I made it 40 bucks to go. The button comes along for a ride, as does the small blind. We're going three ways to the flop. Guess what? Three to a royal flush. I'm gonna see bet. It checks to me. I decide to go with a $60 bet sizing. That's half pot and this flop is pretty dry. The button folds and the small blind calls. Look at that turn card. I now have a flush draw, a straight draw, and a royal flush draw. When you turn a draw like this, a draw that you know you're never gonna hit, you should bet pretty big. I bet 170 here. You can bet a little bit bigger, maybe even up to pot, but I'm okay with this sizing. Small blind calls, and we're gonna need to hit this river, which you know we're never gonna do. And we break the river. This guy has about 300 left. He checks, I'm just gonna make an attempt to win this pot. I put him all in for his $300, and he instantly tables his hand in disgust, showing that he has jack eight. He has a jack. I assume he's gonna call, but he's just sitting there. Let's just all sit together in the awkwardness with the jack staring us in the face. He folded, he folded, we win. He asked if I had it and I kindly showed him that I did not. So after getting into the game for $3,000, I actually booked a $500 loss, which I'm really happy with because it could have been a lot worse. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You guys are the best.